What's up ladies and gentlemen, Nick Smith here and welcome back to another episode of Phenomenal Views. As you know, I have reviewed all the Jaws films. Jaws 1, such a great movie. A masterpiece in cinema. Jaws 2, an unnecessary sequel but we got Roy Schneider back. Jaws 3, another unnecessary sequel but with an interesting premises. With an interesting premise. Roy Schneider said no after reading the script. Today's movie. Jaws 4, The Revenge. Roy Schneider isn't in this film either. Thank goodness, good for him. Jaws 4, The Revenge. This time, it's personal. This is one of the stupidest ideas I have ever watched, ladies and gentlemen. And I have watched a lot of stupid crap on this show. This is one of those unnecessary, horrible sequels. But here's the thing. It's so bad, it's hilarious. Now, let's just... At the beginning of the film, let's just see how funny this is. We get the moving of the shark underwater once again, you know, usual. But this time, its head goes above of it goes above water to look around. It's like we're seeing. It's like, can sharks take their eyes and put them in their fins, and they just see wherever they're going when they're not underwater? Or can they can they use their fin? to guide them around the world. Like, hmm, I want to see what's up top. Uh, yeah, take a right. It's so freaking stupid. It shows like, and it shows in, in red letters, Jaws the Revenge, while Jaws is up out of the water and looking around. In this movie, Jaws is hardly even in the water. He's more above the water than he's in the water. Now, another, another problem with this movie is this movie takes place during Christmas time. Not summertime. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the, the thing with all the Jaws movies, even the unnecessary sequels, they all stay in the same time frame. And I mean by that, they're all in the summertime. This is like taking a... That's like taking Michael Myers and having him kill not on Halloween. That's like having... Jason Voorhees not kill on Friday the 13th. That's what this is. It's taking the killer out of its element. And you already know that the people writing this movie don't give a crap. Okay, so we are then introduced to Sean and Ellen Brody, who are making dinner. And Sean is apparently a police officer. So he goes to check in and do his usual crap. Although we do get a small cameo from Roy Schneider, he is a picture on the wall. Now, just... <laughs> I'm going to get into that real soon. So, Sean is called to remove something out of the water before he goes home. And the shark is watching him. Now, it's not that the shark watching him I have a problem with. It's because he could have obviously seen the shark. I mean, he's above the boat looking to remove this thing, and something's above the water looking at him, and it's obviously making noise. If if I am looking over the water, and I'm hearing something make noise, most likely I'm going to turn my head, and I'm going to look, and I'm going to see, oh, hey, look, there's a shark. It's coming awfully close. I'm going to back away. So, okay, anyway, he goes to remove this thing, and before he even bites Sean, there's already blood in his mouth. What, did he cut himself so he can make it look like he's already eaten something? Is this an emo shark? So the shark goes, and he bites him, and he rips his arm off, and Sean's going like, Oh, gosh! Oh, my gosh! Somebody help me! And it's during this time when people are singing the first Noel. This movie is freaking depressing. It's depressing, people. Incredibly depressing. <laughs> oh, gosh. So, okay, and here's just one thing I have said throughout all these movies. Simply to get away. Um, Jaws has not attacked the boat or damaged it. I understand Sean is in a lot of pain, but all he, could, all he needed to do is just pick himself up, walk over 
sit in the driver's seat, use the arm he has to drive back to Amityville, to drive back to Amity and go to the hospital. But nope, instead he's bending over near the dock going, help me! And then the shark comes and rips into pieces. First death. Uh, then we are reintroduced, we are introduced to Mike Brody, Sean's older brother. And Mike has a, a wife now, and he's a scientist. whoop de frickin do There's no uh, talking about what happened to the girlfriend he was dating in the last movie. Of course, though, he went to Venezuela after the end of the last movie, so maybe he met her in Venezuela. I don't know. Who gives a crap? But, so now, Ellen is all stressed out, and she says that she wants Michael to quit his job, to get out of the water, to get away from it. And he's like, come on, you can't believe this voodoo. You can't believe that sharks hunt, hunt people. And she says, and I quote, it picked out Sean, it killed your father, and Sean says... But Dad died from a heart attack. And she, and she says, he died of fear. The fear of it killed him. Okay. So, you're going to tell me, Miss Brody, that a chief of police officer who went on a voyage and killed a great white shark once... And then he did it again and killed a great shark twice, would be afraid, would all of a sudden be haunted by the fear of sharks after doing that. Yeah, uh, I'm going to have a group of friends say one word, because this is so insulting. Ladies and gentlemen, what do you think about this explanation? Thank you! Thank you! So, her saying that the fear killed him is one of the biggest insults to such a awesome character and it should have been treated better than that so after this uh, uh, michael's like look let's get away here why don't you come to the bahamas with us there's no sharks there it's warm water you'll be fine they talk her into it and she here's another thing she's all freaking out and he's like there's n there's nothing with the Bahamas where sharks would come. There's warm water. They hate it. Wait for that. So we're then introduced to a character, Michael freaking Kane. Yes, Michael Kane, who played Alfred in the Christopher Nolan Batman movies. That's the only other movie. That's the only movies I know Michael Kane to be in. Um, is in a piece of crap like this. Here's the thing. It was just a paycheck. It was like the guy who played Ray in Ghostbusters, who was in the movie Casper, and if you take a close look, he's smiling after he leaves the credit, after he leaves the scene. It was a paycheck movie. As a matter of fact, this movie was so bad, he did not accept an Emmy, or an award, or an Oscar. He did not accept an Oscar in public, because he was so ashamed that this movie was on his record. So, okay... Then we get Ellen having a dream sequence. Note to self, dream sequences are the laziest and most desperate thing to make a movie work. I hate those things. Roger Ebert hated this. In his review of Jaws 4, which by the way, Roger Ebert, rest in peace, he was one of the, he was one of the best critics of our time. He hated the dream sequence. And you know what? There's another one, like mother, like son, because Michael has one too! So, I bet you're wondering, okay, Nick, we've seen the shark a couple times. Why haven't we actually seen the shark? Well, we do see the shark, but here's the thing. It's not scary. There's no suspense. There's no, oh my gosh, he's going to kill someone. It's, oh, there's the shark. And I know the shark is fake. Everyone knows the shark in these movies are freaking fake. This shark looked like crap. It, it honestly looked, they went well out of their way to make the cheapest shark possible. This is a bad movie. But, so, okay. Michael has, uh, Michael's job is he goes in the water and he tags, um, animals in the water, or right now they're tagging snails. Uh, when Michael goes in there, nothing happens. When his pal Jake goes in there, he sees the shark. 
a shark, the shark that killed Sean has followed Ellen Brody from New York to the Bahamas. I'm going to say that again. Swam from New York. Water is cold to the Bahamas where water is warm. I just, does anyone think that th a shark would ever do this? Wrong, 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 wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. You're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. Thank you, Dr. Cox from Scrubs. Sharks love the cold water. They don't like warm water, you freaking retards! But the shark's first attack on Mike, it doesn't even try to attack Mike. It starts attacking the boat. And this guy who's with him, he just looks at the shark and he's like, oh my gosh. Like, like he's freaking annoyed. He's just like, oh, dang it, I just waxed that the other day. So now Jake's all like, okay, now we got an animal we can actually research. So he wants to track the animal with a device that I'm sure is only made in the world of movies that doesn't exist. It's a tracker that they plug into the shark and it will record its heartbeat and they have a machine that will tell when the shark is close or not. So this is a recurring thing throughout the movie. They're looking for the shark and it actually comes back to bite them in the butt. So, Mike is in the water one day, and the shark comes after him. And it scares him so much that he has the nightmare, a, another, another dream sequence. And they keep doing this thing where they are building a psychic connection between Ellie and the freaking shark. Was she part of an x-men conference and she was just a mutant nobody wanted what, what was like this all right let's see who can we have here for the x-men cyclops i like you wolverine you're awesome gene you're hot now wolverine can heal gene is a awesome psychic like myself we have gambit who can throw stuff we have rogue we have beast now do i stop the group here ah yes lady what can you do I have a psychic connection with sharks. Yep, let's go. She's she's the X-Men nobody wanted. She's like Jubilee from the X-Men cartoon. Nobody wants her. Oh my gosh. And, and this movie has some of the dumbest dialogue I have ever heard in my life. There is a scene where, where Michael's wife is upset because she knows something's bugging him. She's a welder, by the way. I figured that I should throw that in there. She is a welder, and he says to her, and I quote, I've always wanted to make love to an angry welder. I've dreamed of nothing else since I was a small boy. Brilliant writing. <laughs> So they're pushing this relationship between Michael Caine and Ellen and how he's basically trying to get her to be like, look, the shark isn't coming. These things will go away. I've been where you've been. Oh, and how about this? He's a pilot that lets people who don't know how to fly a plane fly the plane. He he takes Ellen in the plane and he's like, she's like, what, what are you doing? Fly the plane. But I don't know how to. Well, we're going to be swimming if you don't try, if you don't learn how to in a couple minutes. This movie is so depressing and boring. <laughs> so, uh, okay. So I'm going to start wrapping this up as fast as I possibly can. So Mike's wife does a presentation of her newest sculpture or whatever. While her granddaughter, Thea, uh, goes on this banana boat. 
And um, Jaws is actually starting to try to get his revenge. It's about freaking time. But, but here's the thing. He doesn't go after her granddaughter. He goes after some random blonde. I mean, was he like, duh, duh, oh, I see the granddaughter. Oh, blondes, I love blondes. Ah. What, was that what it was? And, and I honestly feel like this. This shark family is obviously from a shark mafia. Maybe it's the real life version of those sharks from that movie that Will Smith was in about fish and how he killed a... They called him the shark slayer, something like that, I don't know. W was he the one shark nobody cared about and he was re called the retarded shark of that group? So was he the only one left and he has no idea what he's doing? I'm gonna go with that. Because... This movie is like my patience that was gone as soon as I started watching this movie. <laughs> I had it and then as soon as I put it in the DVD player, BAM! Home run and it's gone. Just like my patience is now. So after the shark attacks T Thea, Ellen Brody has enough and she goes and she steals Mike and Jake's boat. And it's this epic battle and she's like, come and get me you stupid fish. While Mike and Jake go to get Michael Caine and he decides it's a brilliant idea to fly the plane into the water. Well, they had no other place to land, so I guess that's all I could do. However, this movie might just be watchable for this one line. Mike and Jake jump out of the plane to swim to the boat, and he's like, Ah, oh, you passengers, you're all the same. The shark comes up, and he looks at it and goes, Ah, oh, crap. That is honestly one of the funniest parts of this movie. That might be the only reason to watch it. So they, get the, they decide to get this idea that if they're going to kill it, they're going to do some other science crap that I'm pretty sure can't happen. They do something to this flashlight. They throw it in the shark's mouth. Jake falls in the shark's mouth. I guess that was part of his plan. And, um... And, you know, it also looks like he would be pretty dead. Uh, so Mike decides to hit this thing. And it shocks him. But you know what else it does? It makes the shark roar like a lion! I'm not kidding! I'm pretty sure it was the lion from a scene from Tom and Jerry. Sharks don't have vocal cords. So then we see Ellie is having all these flashbacks and she's seeing all the killings that have happened. She sees Sean die. She sees Ellie. Um, not Ellie. She sees Thea getting attacked. So then all of a sudden they start comparing her with Rob Schneider. And when I watched this film, I thought it was like, okay, Rob Schneider's spirit or something is with her. And it's, and it's like she's reliving the first time he blew up the shark. So she's taking the boat. And it's at the scene like where he says, smile, you son of a... And when he says the other word and he fires the gun, she pokes Jaws with the boat and he freaking explodes. But it's not like in Halloween, The Curse 6, The Curse of Michael Myers, where it's glorious. It, it, it's nothing like that. This is, this is one of those moments. I, 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 want to, I want to ask this person. Um, I want to ask this person something. Could this ever happen in real life? Million years, absolutely not. No way, Jose. No chance, plants yet. Negatory. Mm -mm, nah. Uh oh, and of course, my own personal favorite of all time, man falling off of a cliff. No. Thank you. So the shark explodes. And this is actually the ending to Jaws, the video game that was made by LGN, which that game's a piece of crap. The, they made a TV ending, like where they actually poke the shark and he falls. But they decided they were going to be so cheap, they rehashed, they rehashed the destruction of the shark ending from the first movie with Jaws sinking to the bottom of the freaking ocean and somehow Jake's still alive. And everyone say it with me, bull freaking crap! But yes, ladies and gentlemen, somehow they get back to the island, somehow Ellie gets on another plane and goes back to Amity where we never hear from her again. Guys, put in the comments below, what did you think about Jaws of Revenge? Did you think it's funny or a, or a failure? I personally think it's a failure. I want to know what you think, guys. Have a good day.